Hi everyone, this is All Outdoor One here, reporting from somewhere in the Mediterranean. Um, first up, we're just going to take a little look at some of the uh, local plants and uh, fruit produci producing trees um, that are common to the Mediterranean climate, semi-arid climate. Um, some of these plants can also be found in more kind of desert arid conditions, um, namely prickly pear um, but I hope you guys find this interesting um, or as usual questions comments are welcome I uh, hope you enjoy take care hi everyone this is All Outdoor One here reporting to you from somewhere in the Mediterranean um, most people will be familiar with this book the SAS Survival Guide, Collins Gem. Um, in here, with regards to water procurement, we have um, some desert plants, including the prickly pear. Um, it says here, prickly pears have big ears and produce oval fruits which ripen to red or gold. Their large spines are easy to avoid. Both fruit and ears are moisture laden. And here is the plant in question. This is a prickly pear plant. Um, it hasn't produced any fruit yet. It's uh, too early in the season. But these are the ears that are referred to in the SAS survival guide. Just so I'll give everyone a little look at this plant up, up close. Now you simply cut into the plant and it contains um, lots of moisture which can literally be squeezed out. I'll, um, I'll cut a little piece off here just to demonstrate. <coughs> Over here, as you can see, are the beginnings of the fruit. They haven't ripened yet. Still got quite a long way to go. Um, a small piece to cut off somewhere. Now this is a cultivated plant obviously. Um, they do grow a lot bigger than this. So that's what it looks like when you cut into it. Spines aren't too huge, and uh, you can extract moisture from this fairly easily. This contains like a sappy kind of liquid, and you can literally just squeeze it out. It's uh, similar in texture to aloe vera on the inside and has a kind of viscous liquid as you can see but actually it is edible and definitely non-poisonous so I thought I'd just show that to people um, just came across this beautiful specimen here this is the um, prickly pear once again. As you can see, this one has a lot of fruit on it. And over here, we have an even larger example. This is uh, the size they can grow up to if left for several years. As you can see, pretty huge plant. 
definitely wouldn't like to fall on top of that. Over here we have a pomegranate tree, these are generally available for most supermarkets nowadays, very sweet fruit, also grows in the Mediterranean climate. Um, yeah, The prickly pear grows not only in the Mediterranean but in more arid conditions as well. Just a little panoramic view. And staying with fruits, here's another very common fruit in the Mediterranean. This is the peach, obviously. These look particularly juicy, I must say. And here in front of us we have a fig tree. Also another very common fruit in the Mediterranean. These are unripe as yet, as you can tell by their size and colour, very green at the moment, need to become slightly more purple, bluish kind of colour. Another fig tree over here, it's got quite a distinctive leaf shape to it and is the leaves are slightly furry, just to help with identification, with quite pronounced veins on the, on the underside of the leaf. And over here we have another food plant. Now I'd appreciate it if anyone could help me with coming up with the uh, English name for this plant here. Here's a little close up of the actual fruits themselves. The ripe ones turn to a kind of reddish colour and uh, the flavour is very similar to um, pepper. Uh, it's like a mild form of pepper. You can literally just crunch them and get a nice peppery burst in your mouth. It's not overpowering, but if anybody um, knows the name of this plant, I'd, uh, it would be much appreciated if you let me know what it is. Let me just get another close-up of the uh, fruit again. So that's what they look like. As you can see, the unripe ones are kind of yellowy and the ripe ones are reddish in colour. And um, another plant that's very common in the Mediterranean is the um, cypress tree. That's C-Y-P-R-E-S-S. -S. And um, it's easily identifiable by its fruits. These aren't actually edible. They're just used for ornament ornamentation. Um, but as I said, you can identify them easily by the fruit, which is quite distinctive. Or should I say by the kernel that it produces. And over here, we have Victoria Plum. This one has already passed its fruit bearing season. Bear. But I mean most of these fruit trees are easily identifiable when the fruit is in season which generally is when the plant will be of most use to, of most use to anybody. Here's another interesting looking plant. Uh, there's nothing edible to this one purely for a uh, well this is actually a wildflower, but quite unusual. I like the flower heads. And finally, for our fruit and veg, se <laughs> veg section today, we have the classic Mediterranean tree, 
which is obviously the olive you know the Greek and Roman empires were built on these hundreds and hundreds of uses for olives and the oil that can be extracted from them um, actually one use that a lot of people may not be familiar with is um, if you take the leaves dry them out slightly and then um, place them on top of burning charcoal um, it produces a really intense sweet smell uh, which is which is often used in uh, religious ceremonies over here and um, yeah, it's just used as a type of incense around the house also obviously the olives themselves these are not ripe as yet um, and some people are unaware of this but green and black olives are essentially the same it's just that um, the green olives are less mature and the black olives are fully matured but they come from exactly the same plant quite a distinctive leaf also Sil silvery on the underside and uh, slightly more green on the top side so this is my um, first report from the Mediterranean and uh, this is All Outdoor One signing out for now